Hello everyone, in this episode of From Start To Part, I'm going to be creating this little V-belt pulley. I need a couple of these for the um, robotics project I'm working on. This mates with a 3L size V-belt, and unfortunately when I was looking around, I was trying to find exactly what I wanted on like McMaster or um, SDP, SI, or whoever else, and I just really couldn't find the right pulley. All of them had a hub or didn't have the right shaft diameter size, and just I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for, so I decided to make my own. I did a lot of looking online, and I came across a video from Jason Hughes where he was actually using his mill to turn down parts, and this is a process called mill turning, and essentially what you do is normally you have a um, end mill or some kind of cutting tool in the chuck or in the collet, and then you have the workpiece down below in the vise. So if you just simply flip those and have the cutting tool down in the vise and have the workpiece up here in the collet like that, then you can actually use your mill as a lathe. So that's what I'm going to be showing in this video. So let's get started. Normally this is the part in the video where I would show you the model and I would show you the cam. However, this is a relatively simple part. It is just a 1.25 inch diameter pulley that fits on the V-belt. I really just went to McMaster Car, went on their website, found a pulley that was really similar to what I was looking for, downloaded the part, made some modifications, and then just kind of went from there. I was using this part in Fusion 360 because the cam output, I can only use Fusion 360 because my version of the cam software in SolidWorks does not support turning. So I just created the part in Fusion 360 and used their cam output. If you want to know a little bit more about the cam side of it, check the description down below on this video. I have it linked to Jason's video and a couple others, and they kind of went more into the cam side. And I'll talk a little bit about that as the video progresses, but really there's not that much you need to do with the cam side of it. The first step in making this part was to take some stock and cut it down to size on the bandsaw. I had some stock that was 1.75 inch in diameter, and the pulley was going to be one and a quarter inch diameter, so that would work out just fine. The final size of the pulley is a half inch wide, so I cut off a chunk that was slightly larger than that. I think I ended up somewhere around eh, 0.62, so about 5 eighths inches long. I then needed to size this stock down to exactly one half inch. And there's a couple different ways to do that, and I kind of debated back and forth. Originally, I was going to put this on the lathe and just face it off, then flip it over, face it off again, and, you know, just get that down to the final half inch size. However, I decided to actually use a V-block in the Tormach and use the Superfly to face off one side, then flip it over, face off the other side, and then just basically face it down to the final dimension. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I just did on the mill mainly because I don't like the chuck on my lathe, and I just felt a little bit more comfortable doing this on the mill. Now I have this nice little puck of aluminum that is half an inch thick and 1.75 inch in diameter. I need to, of course, turn this down to my final pulley dimensions. So what I'm going to do is a little trick that I learned from ClickSpring's channel, which is, of course, fantastic. The final shaft size that I need to mount this on is a 6 millimeter shaft. So what I'm going to do is use a 7 32nd inch drill bit to bore out the center on the lathe. And then after I get that hole drilled, I'm going to use a 6 millimeter reamer to ream that to exactly 6 millimeters in size. And then I'm going to use a little um, steel shaft that I have to super glue that on the inside. Once I get that super glued together, it is just a matter of inserting this into an ER20 collet. So I can set that inside like that. And then I have a way to mount this into the tool holder on the mill and turn it. Now that the stock is mounted into the collet, we need to talk about the turning tool. This is the tool that I'm using. It is an SVVCN from Shars. If you're unfamiliar with what these markings mean, Tormach did a nice little blog post about this, and I'll link that down in the description. The thing I care most about here is the V. That refers to the angle of the insert. This angle right here and there is 35 degrees, which is important because it's smaller than the internal angle of this pulley, meaning I'll be able to move freely inside here and cut that profile cleanly. Now to mount this on the vise, we need to mount it like this, 
and the actual stock will be turning in the spindle like that. That means that this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and this is the z-axis. We're not really that concerned with the y-axis since we won't be moving in this direction, but we still need to indicate and reference the um, point here on the tool. When you set this up in CAM, you actually can tell it where your reference point is for the insert. You define the insert and all the parameters of the insert, and then where your reference point is. For me, I have the very tip right there as my X0, Y0, Z0. So when it's mounted in the vise like this, I use the passive probe to come at it from the Y direction like that and indicate there is my Y0. I came at it from the side with the probe and right there is going to be my X0. And then for the Z0, I need to find that tip right in the middle. So what I did is since this is 3 8 inch wide, that means halfway down the middle is 0.1875. So if I indicate off the top, I can just subtract out 0.1875 and that will put me right there. So I used a 1, 2, 3 block to reference off the top, move the workpiece down until it just barely touched, added the um, size of the 1, 2, 3 block plus 0.1875 and that gave me my zero point right there on the tip. I was a little reluctant to actually hit go and see what would happen, but actually the turning worked perfectly fine. I really didn't have any issues other than a little hiccup at the end that I'll talk about. I was running this really slow. I can't remember exactly what the feeds and speeds were, but I am very unfamiliar with how to do CNC turning, so I just kind of threw in some really safe numbers and went from that. I think I was somewhere around 500 or 600 RPM on the spindle, and the feed rate was somewhere around two, and that was like really, really slow. However, I did get a fantastic surface finish out of it, but for the next pulley that I'm making, I'm gonna try bumping that up and getting a lot better um, feed rate out of it because this was a really slow part to make, but you know, it turned out fine. As you can tell from the video, I was taking really, really shallow cuts. I was only doing 5,000 step over, which is really small considering the feed rate and everything I'm working with, but I just wanted to throw in something that I knew would work and I wouldn't have any issues with that. So I know that this works, so I can always kind of, um, you know, ramp it up from there and go faster for next time. At the very end in this last finishing pass, you can see that there's an issue with the cam. The tool kind of um, digs into the top of the pulley a little bit, and that's because I didn't enable no dragging in the profile. Basically what happens is when it's cutting in from the bottom, it's cutting its own way in, but then when it comes up through the top, that material hasn't yet been removed, so it kind of drags the tool against material that it's supposed to be cutting kind of later on in the process. So by turning on no dragging, it actually skips that and then comes in from the top instead and it won't drag across the material. So something to learn for next time. Once I remove the pulley and the shaft combo from the collet, I need to get rid of the shaft. I used a little mini blowtorch to heat up the super glue, and after about a minute or so, it was hot enough and the super glue melted, and I just slid the shaft out, and I was left with my finished pulley. For me, this was a nice test or proof of concept that I can use the mill in this fashion to make things like V-belt pulleys or other mechanical components that I need because I'm gonna need to do something much, much larger here in the near future using a three-jaw chuck and this big piece instead. So I've got a little bit of a ways to go before I can make something like this. But it is nice. If you check out a lot of videos on YouTube, there's a lot of people doing really crazy stuff with um, fixture plates that hold multiple tools and they're using um, various offsets that they can actually switch from various tools. And then they have um, tools sticking up vertically that they can actually do boring and drilling operations. So it's really cool what people are doing with this. So definitely expect to see a little bit more of this in the future because this is definitely a part I need to make to interface with this little guy. So yep, expect to see that in some future videos. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, check me out on Facebook, or even check me out on Patreon. And thanks as always for watching. See you next time.